What's up guys, Jason of New Age Revolution down here in the cave on another snowy February evening. We are here with exceptionally bright lighting. Yeah, we'll get it right. We'll get it right. Uh, we're we're going to do uh, some stuff. We're going to do some fun stuff. We're going to talk. Uh, that that uh, that Mount Rushmore show that I did about the uh, the four um, in in my mind in my childhood the four most influential or four most important toys of the eighties we did it in the uh, Mount Rushmore style I liked the idea and I thought of some more stuff to put up on good old Mount Rushmore and uh, and as long as we keep coming up with ideas we can do this show uh, before I do that uh, apparently. Uh, there, there is a, there is a similar type of show over on the, uh, the Rushmore show. That's right. The fellas from the Rushmore show reached out to me and said, Hey, great, you know, great episode. Apparently over there on their show, the Rushmore show, uh, all they, all they do is, is this Rushmore style stuff, the four greatest or whatever with some honorable mentions. And so, you know, I was like, Hey, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't, you know, I didn't mean to steal your idea or anything like that. Uh, I checked them out. They're 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 a new channel. They're growing. They've got about seventy subscribers. So get over there to the to the to the Rushmore Show channel and uh, give them some love as they do Mount Rushmore style shows. And uh, and then they gave me their blessing to keep going with ours. So we're gonna keep it going. Uh, today's Rushmore Show, Mount Rushmore, uh, here on the New Eighties Revolution, is the the Mount Rushmore of 1980s food. Yeah, that's right. You know, when we when we think back, when we think fondly on our childhood, uh, obviously we think about toys. Obviously we think about cartoons. You know, obviously we think about wrestling and, and you know, all the stuff that we've talked about on the channel. Uh, but we, you, you know that we absolutely think about food. Uh, because food was such a major part of our childhood, not just for nutrition, obviously, we had to eat. So yes, food was a part of our human lives back in the 80s. Uh, but special stuff was a big part of our lives in the 80s. I mean, of course we're talking about, you know, the Hawaiian punch that came in a, uh, you know, a metal rusty can. <laughs> You know, could you imagine, you know, just drinking the, the fruit punch? Uh, I got some other stuff here to show you, but I'll save that for the show. Um, and, and so these foods are uh, pretty, I think, exclusive to me. I'm sure that some of you will share in the, in the joy of these. Uh, but, uh, the, you know, these, these four foods, when I sat down to do this, uh, and and looks like one of them is not a, a specific brand. It's just a kind of a, a genre of food, which was extremely important in the '80s in my life. Um, uh, so you know, let let's uh, let's get in it. Let's let's talk about the four most uh, influential. No, I mean four most important, four most fun, four foods that I immediately started. They, you know, as soon as I started this idea, sat down with the old pencil and thought, mm, you know, what foods can I, these, these images started popping into my head. And so boom, you write them right down and you talk about them with you guys. Uh, the Mount Rushmore of 1980 foods. Here we go. Uh, the first one, uh, what do you know is not a food. I, I guess it could be a food if you chewed it uh, without adding water. Uh, I am talking about a drink, ladies and gentlemen. And, and no, no, it's not Hawaiian Punch, which is very good, very delicious. Uh, no, I'm not talking about Hawaiian Punch. I'm talking about the most influential drink, the most important drink of my childhood. Uh, Kool-Aid, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, Kool-Aid. Absolutely a important uh, drink of the 80s, every household, unless you had parents that were like, mm -mm, no, that's just, pure, that's just pure sugar, darling. That's just pure sugar. You're not eating pure sugar. No, 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 we're not putting that in your body. You become obese. If you had those parents, then you didn't get uh, Kool-Aid. Uh, I didn't. I didn't have that mom. Uh, so uh, we, we had Kool-Aid. And, and the beauty of it is that it was like a dime for, uh, per envelope, 
right? You got the uh, you got the Kool Aid envelope packets, and they were cheap. Now, uh, most people, I think, would just add the Kool Aid to the water, but if you didn't add sugar to the Kool Aid uh, and the water, then you just had slightly flavored water. And so you needed to dump sugar in it. Now, let's all go back. I think every single one of us, every single one of us can go back in time right now. Ready? You've got the Kool-Aid envelope, okay? It's grape, it's cherry. Uh, later on in the Kool-Aid life, and maybe in the later 80s, we had a flavor called Berry Blue, which just was like the best ever. Blue raspberry, that was our go-to choice. Grape is uh, outstanding. So let me take you back. I, I, I have the, uh, hang on a second, stay right here. Okay, let me bring you back. We're about to go into a time machine. I'm going to bring you back to your kitchens, 1985, because every single one of us uh, had one of these in our refrigerator that had Kool-Aid in it. I think I just broke this. I didn't break it, but you know. Anyway, every single one of us had Kool-Aid in one of these pitchers, and every single one of us had this pitcher in our fridge. And when you were making the Kool-Aid, you had to get the biggest spoon you could find. So you would usually use um, spoons that your mother would use for cooking. So you'd either use the long wooden spoon to get in there and stir the Kool-Aid, right? Or you'd use like a ladle, right? Or you'd use a, a really large plastic spoon. Right? So it was either a wooden spoon or it was a ladle for us. And you'd just get in there and you'd hear the, you'd hear the sugar just grinding against the bottom of this pitcher. Right? Just, just grinding up. And then, if you were anything like me, as soon as you finished the Kool-Aid, you, you had the shaky thing in your hand, and I went like this. I had... <laughs> I had to have the first sip of the Kool-Aid, or I would just get some on the spoon and, 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 and drink it like that. So we all had this. This was always filled with grape Kool-Aid or berry blue. Kool-Aid is absolutely a Mount Rushmore food for me from the 80s. Uh, a second food that is... Oh, uh, let's go back to Kool-Aid. Uh, we've all heard of lemonade stands, of course. Uh, I didn't care about lemonade stands. If I was going to do something like that, it was always a Kool-Aid stand. I would always have Kool-Aid stands. We always lived in apartments, so I would just set up on the corner of the, you know, of like the apartment complex, uh, uh, you know, some kind of card table or, or whatever, and and this and some cups and you know, boom, fifty cents a quarter Kool-Aid stand. Uh, the next item, the next item, as I said, is not a is not a particular brand. It's not one one particular food. It's a food group. It's a genre. Uh, of course, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, this this food uh, could be eaten uh, any time during the day. Uh, I, I believe it's probably advertised uh, towards breakfast. But I know that it was not necessarily a breakfast item for me. Uh, more so a midday, but definitely an evening uh, food. I'm talking about, of course, cereal, guys. Uh, cereal. What 80s kid does uh, does not have a head full of cereal memories? Now, was the 80s not the best time to be a cereal fan? Uh, just like every cartoon uh, had an action figure, right? It, it seems like every cartoon or every action figure had a cereal. And, and they were all the same. I mean, you know, how much different could cereals be? But, you know, you had your different shapes and maybe your different flavors and maybe some had marshmallows. Uh, but cereal was, uh, man, if there's, if there's something that can, you know, really just represent childhood in the 80s, it, it's cereal if we're talking about food. And like I said, I, I certainly had cereal in the morning. I was never a real breakfast guy. I'm still not. Um, I don't like breakfast food, right? I, I'll eat some eggs. I, I'm not a pancake guy. I'm not a waffle guy. I really don't like breakfast sausage. I don't like. I don't like the way it tastes. Um, so I was, I, I, you know, I was never hungry in the morning, you know. I so I didn't eat a lot of breakfast. So you know, I didn't eat a lot of cereal for breakfast. But I'll tell you what, if there was a snack that I was going to have uh, at nighttime, it was going to be a bowl of cereal. 
and it just seemed right. And and to this day, I mean, last night I had a bowl of cereal watching uh, Different Strokes, which is the new show that I'm watching. I got through Golden Girls. I'll talk about that at another time. But as I sit down at 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night on the couch, I've got my bowl of, of um, what do I have? Something with almonds. Like, uh, it's a, it's not a kid's cereal, but it's not necessarily an adult cereal. It's like um, Honey Bunches of Oats with, with almonds, I think I've got. Something like that. It, it's one of those cereals. Um, and it's good. It, it's fine. But also up in my cupboard is uh, Fruit Loops and, and Apple Jacks because those are, are tremendous. Uh, so at nighttime, cereal was the main snack for me, and it still is today. And my goodness, uh, like I said, every single fandom uh, that we had as kids was represented by a toy and was represented by a cartoon and, of course, was represented by a cereal. Best memories ever. Uh, in, in the snack category, which I just made up, or we don't have to do these in categories, but uh, obviously chips and, and you know, the, the stuff that you'd, you'd have in the snack cupboard uh, was important. Uh, but there's one particular snack that stood out for me, and again, still does to this day, and I've, I'm glad to have passed on the, uh, the love of this item to my, um, to my six-year-old. Uh, because him and I can crush a bag in, in no time. Uh, Doritos is definitely on my 1980s food Mount Rushmore. Doritos uh, was a special, special snack. I, the, it still tastes the same. The tastiest snack you can have, the tastiest chip, in my opinion, that you can have. I love Doritos, and I love them to this day. Unfortunately... Unfortunately, if anybody else is eating Doritos near me, I become extremely angry and nauseous because they smell horribly once they've entered somebody's mouth. That's a big problem. Uh, I don't care if I'm eating them, right? But if somebody near me eating some Doritos, I'm like, go outside in the backyard to the, not even to the, just go to the back of the backyard, go to the fence, get away from me with those Doritos because they stink, but I love them. I, I have I have dipped them in French onion dip. That's good. Um, cool Ranch, sure. You know when Cool Ranch first came out in the eighties, uh, we were all over it. Like uh, uh, you know, like what I don't know. White on rice, stink on flies on poo. Whatever you want to say, we were on it. We we you know Cool Ranch Doritos changed the game. And then as I got a little bit older, I shifted back to the original Dorito. And there's been, you know, spicy nacho and taco along the way. Mm -mm, stay home with those. Give me your original nacho uh, cheese Doritos. The Cool Ranch I will accept and enjoy, but Doritos is where it's at for me. It's always been. Uh, even though I experienced an extremely... A traumatic event with Doritos as a child um, that should have ended my uh, my love affair with Doritos, but it didn't. Uh, I had a little sister uh, who was a few years younger than me, so I'm about eight, uh, let's say nine, okay, and that would make her uh, five. Uh, yeah, nine and five. Well, uh, we had a bowl of Doritos in a you know, in our living room. It was nighttime. Uh, we were watching some some evening television, right? And, and so we had our snack bowl of Doritos. And uh, I went to get a Dorito, and it, it was wet. It was moist. In fact, um, uh, all of the Doritos, or most of the Doritos, were moist uh, because my little five-year-old sister had, had licked all of the cheese uh, off the Dorito and then placed it back in the bowl. And, and, you know, that, whew, that, that sent me, that sent me in a, in a, in a vortex of, of, of emotional, just damage, very damaging experience as a child. Uh, you know, unfortunately, some people experience abuse as a child, um, divorce and things like that. Uh, I, I almost ate a, a licked Dorito, a moist, uh, sucked on Dorito, uh, uh, you know, so, but, uh, but that's okay. I've put that aside and, and I've moved on and Doritos are still huge in my life today. Finally, 
finally, and, and I have worked very hard to keep this uh, 80s icon alive in our house. Both of my children enjoy this. Liam is Liam can't have cheese and dairy and things like that, so his choices are limited. Liam's not a food guy. He, he's not a foodie because of the stupid allergies that he's had. It, it, food has not become an event for him. Uh, Finley, on the other hand, uh, probably is a, too much of a food guy. In fact, we've probably got to rein him in a little bit, but uh, Finley is my, my, my food guy, and he loves this place very much. In fact, he reminds me of me. He's getting ready. He keeps asking me, can he graduate to the next level? And then you'll know what I'm saying in a minute. Uh, I'm talking about McDonald's, ladies and gentlemen. McDonald's is absolutely an 80s food staple. Um, now, uh, when I say he's ready to go to the next level, I remember very specifically at, at age eight or so being done with the smaller McDonald's burgers, right? Don't, don't insult me uh, at eight years old by offering me a cheeseburger from McDonald's. Do not insult me. When I can see the menu that has these bigger burgers, right, with the lettuce and the tomato, or maybe the Big Mac, that, that creation that blows the mind of the children. You know, so I, I was ready to move up very early on. So I was eating Big Macs probably a little sooner than uh, many kids did because I just wasn't going to settle anymore for the, for the little cheeseburger. And Finley is ready for that. His mother... Not so much. So that might end up being, you know, a daddy Finley day out where he's, uh, you know, it's got to be like, whoa, don't ever say anything um, because he's ready. He's ready to, to climb the ladder a little bit and experience the bigger McDonald's burger. But man, oh man, you know, was McDonald's a very special place, a very special part of our youth. Absolutely. Uh, cheap enough that you could have from time to time. I wouldn't say regularly, but you certainly could. You know, the prices were pretty cheap back then. Um, I remember even still in, in more modern times when, when, you know, your value meals were five bucks. You know, you could get the Big Mac value meal for four ninety nine, I think. Um, or probably in the uh, early 90s. And now, uh, you know, of course, McDonald's prices have skyrocketed. And most meals are over $10 at the end of the day, uh, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, McDonald's, you know, chicken nuggets had a special place in my life for a long time. Strangely enough, with the honey sauce, you could get honey uh, back in the day, and I would get honey with the chicken nuggets, which is odd, but uh, that's what I would do. Um, so, yeah, that that's huge. The, the, I was never a Happy Meal guy again because I needed the big burger. I didn't, I, I couldn't deal with that. Uh, honorable mentions, if you will, uh, fruit roll-ups, a big part of childhood. Uh, bologna, bologna or, or hot dogs, even still, both the same to me. Uh, big, big part of school lunches where it was bologna. And uh, Chinese food in containers. Uh, they, they've seemed to have gotten away from that now. Uh, I, I always liked the Chinese food in the little white takeout containers. And Chinese food was, you know, somebody had maybe hit the lottery in our house. If it was Chinese food night, something happened. Something's going on. Why is this happening? Why is it Chinese food night? But when it was, whew, look out. Oh, I forgot to show you. I got this uh, little Big Mac 80s... Uh, 80s Big Mac container. Anyway, that's the Mount Rushmore of food. You know what to do. Leave your top four down below. Enjoy. Uh, I'm going to go get some Chinese food. Truly, I am. I'm late. And uh, that's that. Uh, see you all next time. Good night now.